There, it started. We're gonna start and cut the front off. Ready whenever you are, boss. Hi, I'm RJ here at R&R Marine Supply in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. I'm Jeff from R&R Marine Supply in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. We're here today to uh, talk a little bit about RH Aluminum Boats. It's a, a brand of heavy gauge boats that we've just recently picked up uh, to be a dealer for. Um, they're heavy gauge boats that are built out in um, Oregon State. And we're just gonna talk a little bit about the brand, talk a little bit about the couple of boats that we have here in stock. Um, have a have a little conversation about why we carry these boats and you know what heavy gauge boats are in general so i think you know a lot of people ask that question is you know what uh, what is what does that mean heavy gauge boat um explain right. a little bit so heavy gauge boats basically refers to the thickness of the metal that they're built out of uh heavy gauge boats are exclusively welded aluminum boats with a uh, material thicknesses that are you know more than a uh, hundred thousandths or 0 0.100 of an inch um, a lot of the boats are you know 160 thousandths on the bottom 190 thousandths on the bottom maybe even you know 250 a quarter inch thick on the bottom the sides of the boats are going to be somewhere in the 100 to 125 maybe 160 um, and the transom a lot of times is even thicker than that in some of these boats, like 190 or 250. Um, again, so up to a quarter of an inch, somewhere between an eighth and a quarter is pretty common in most of these boats, where a more traditional boat is gonna be less than 100 thousandths or right around 100 thousandths. Um, we, we also sell Crestliner, it's another brand of welded aluminum boats, but we don't really consider those a heavy gauge welded aluminum boat. Um, so that's just a real general specific uh, a general idea of what a, a heavy gauge boat actually is. So the one thing about that is, you know, you talk about the different thicknesses. A lot of the heavy gauge boats, like this one behind us, um, their side aluminum is as heavy as many boats hull aluminum. So, you know, what you're doing is getting that much thicker of a hull, and then the sides are as thick as what you're gonna see in a lot of boats in today's markets. Um, and, with the side so it's amazing what they're doing and the thing about it is which i find uh, people think that they're heavy and that's not the case at all am i right yeah right so because the materials are thicker um so the bottom and the sides are thicker than a more traditional bow you actually gain a lot of strength in that so you don't need a lot of additional strengthening like strengthening ribs and, and extra structure inside the hull of the boat because you're gaining a lot of strength from the actual hull itself so in general these boats don't end up being that much heavier than a comparable sized you know more traditionally built boat um, so heavy gauge it's really just referring to the thickness of the metal on the outside of the boat doesn't really refer to the actual weight of the boat itself one of the other characteristics that you're going to see in a lot of a, uh, of what they call a heavy gauge boat is that besides the hull being all welded, everything is all welded. Um, you know, the windshields are all welded in. If there happen to be a hard top, it's all welded in. Um, so what you're getting is, um, you know, you've seen boats or you've heard people, they get into some rough waters, you know, windshields start to give a little movement, things like that. With a heavy gauge, all welded boat, you know, if you pop a windshield out of something like this, you You've problems. done some major damage to something <laughs> yeah. else as well. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, RH aluminum boats. Um, again, these are these are built in Grants Pass, Oregon, um, and they're a company that's been around um, for quite a long time. We just haven't really seen or heard of them too much here in the Great Lakes region where we're located. Um, we spent some time looking at a lot of different brands. We do carry some other brands of boats as well, um, and we've we've considered what really works well in our market. Um, and one of the things that we find is that heavy gauge boats sometimes end up being quite expensive compared to more traditional boats. RH aluminum boats actually provides quite a bit of value. You get a really nice, well-built bow at a price point that's lower than most boats of a similar size. Um, you know, like the boat behind us, it's a, what they call the SH Sport 180 or a 18 foot bow um, that, Right now we've got a 90 horse outboard on it, but we're able to price this boat in 2024 model year, we're able to price this boat at $46,750. Um, it's a very well equipped boat in that sub $50,000 price point. 
in a little while, we'll turn and look at another boat that we have here that's a 20 foot boat with a two foot extended platform on the back of it. So overall a 22 foot boat that we're able to sell for less than $70,000 with a 200 horse on it. So again, it's, it's providing a lot of value in a, in a given size and style of a particular boat. One of the main reasons that we picked up RH is for that. Um, we're, we're able to offer our customers great value. Um, and, and that's a lot of what we talk about, a lot of why we, we choose the boats that we choose to bring in to sell to our customers. We wanna provide value. It's not just so much getting the best price, it's getting the most for your money. So the one thing, you know, this boat right here, this is an 18 foot boat. It actually measures about 18, seven, 18, I think. 6, 18, 6, 7, yep. yep. And uh, you had said it's got a 90 on it. You know, and someone's gonna say, wow, an 18 foot boat with a 90, oh my gosh, the thing's gonna be a dog. We've had this boat in the water and it's anything it, but a dog. It's, it performs very well. Um, so it's a very agile boat. It also hops up on plane like the, it's nothing. Um, and again, that's with a 90 horse. Um, we actually didn't have quite the right prop on it, but we were seeing speeds right around 40 miles an hour, right at the rev limiter. I actually think with the right prop, it's gonna be a little over 40 miles an hour. So now, well, it, that being said, this boat, is rated up to a 150. A 150. So a 150 on this boat gets to be almost to the point where it's maybe too much power. But a, a, a 90 or a 115 is a perfect match for this boat. Yeah, because I think a 150 would be like, it'd be a lot. It, yeah, <laughs> it, it would be almost too much motor. And I, I think, you know, you, you, you run into weight issues and stuff like yeah. that as well. But o overall, I, I'd say a 90 gives you the performance you actually need. If you want a little more, bumping up to that 115 works well on this boat. And uh, and as far as, you know, ride-wise, it's excellent on the ride, yeah. which actually we even, we put the boat in the water, we took off and hit some waves, we kind of looked at each other like, wow, this thing really rides nice. And and that's the thing, if a, if a hull design is good on a boat, whether, I don't care what brand you're buying, um, you know, people don't realize the difference in hull design and if it's designed right, you're gonna get a good ride. Now, they do have a cab forward on a lot of heavy gauge boats. The cab forward, meaning the windshield's pushed a little farther forward. What that does is it gives you way more fishing room in the back end of your boat. Now, if you're a jig fisherman that wants to be always up in the bow or a bass guy that's always up casting, it might not be the right boat for you. You know, if you're in the Great Lakes and you're a troll, you're a walleye, salmon, lake trout, you know, when you have all that room in the back of these boats, that's where that's where the deal is. Right, right. I mean, and you know, you talk about a, a jig fisherman or otherwise, yeah. but one thing I will say, even about RH compared to some of the other brands, is even in these boats, like this. Again, we've got an SH Sport 180 here, uh, right over there. We've got a Coastal 20. Have a little bit bigger bow than some of the other brands that are yeah, out there. So sure. if you do want to use the bow for some fishing space, you can do that. You can't really see it in these pictures, but even this 22 footer, you can see here that has a hard top. It's actually got in that 20 footer is going to have the same bow. Right. Um, it actually has a fairly decent sized bow on it. So if you, if you are a guy that wants to jig fish or you're casting from the bow a lot, you have a butt seat up front, you, you, we could get that all set up. You could certainly do it. There's plenty of room for that. Um, the other thing too is depending on where the live well sits, the live well, this boat here is in the bow. Right. Uh, in the coastal, we're going to show you in a couple minutes, the live well is in the transom. Right. Um, so, I mean, it all depends on the layout of that particular boat, too. So, RH Boats has kind of a whole lineup of boats. Um, everything from tiller boats. Uh, in fact, we've got one of those in stock as well. It's an 18-foot tiller boat. Um, designed maybe even more for like a hunting application, duck hunting and so forth. Then they move into the SH Sport. Uh, so that tiller boat's called the Pro-V. Um, they make that in a couple of different lengths, but the 18 is the primary one. The SH Sport is the next bigger boat up with a traditional windshield, a more traditional transom on it. They make that in an 18 and a 20 foot. Then we move into the Coastal, uh, which gives you that extended platform, which is a real typical design element on a lot of the heavy gauge manufacturers out there. The Coastal Hardtop is a, a hardtop version of that. I don't know if you can make out the pictures in the uh, in the signs that we've got yeah. here or not, um, but that is uh, kind of the next step up. Then we move over to their to their Pro Cuddy. So they make a 22, 24, and 26 foot Pro Cuddy, and then they also have an offshore pilot house style boat and a 28 uh, 28 XL, which moves up to a wider beam. 
um, a 30 and then actually a 32 XL as well. The production capacity is relatively limited on those bigger boats, um, but um, we actually do have a 26 foot pro cutting on order, um, expecting it here this spring. That would be this boat right here. Oh, and that's that boat right there, right, exactly. So I'm gonna pick up the camera here a second and we're gonna just do a little bit of a walk around um, of these two boats that we've got here in the showroom and uh, just give you an idea of what they are and what they look like. I'll grab the camera. Okay, you can grab the camera. Okay, let's go. So again, this is the SH Sport 180. Um, so if you just take a look at it, um, we did a video about this when it first came in a couple of months ago. Um, it, it's a traditional layout as far as heavy gauge boats are concerned, where it's got what they call a notched transom or a traditional transom. The engine is mounted right to the back of the boat. You just have a splash well here, and then you you know have the interior of the boat there. Um, again, this is an 18 foot boat. You've got the two bench seats, um, still have plenty of fishing space here at the back. Um, and then a traditional um, helm and passenger seat at the bow. Nice things that they do on these boats. I'm gonna hop up in the boat here a minute. Um, many of these RH uh, boats have this here, which is uh, built-in tackle storage. Kind of a unique feature because not a lot of boats uh, of this style provide little you know, add-on things like that. Um, again, that's got tackle storage there, nice glove box on these boats, nice big storage box here. And then one thing that RH does that's a little bit unique is they have actually just an empty area up underneath the bow. What this boat has in there is the uh, storage for the trolling motor batteries. So this boat's all rigged up for a trolling motor to be mounted on the bow. Um, and the location to mount the batteries is down underneath um, the, the bow actually has a battery charger built in down there as well, which is a really nice feature. So what's really cool about that is because now you're taking your batteries, they're out of the way, they're completely self-contained up front, you're not having to worry about it, the battery charger's already in place. And I think that that's one of the things, you know, I mean, I'm gonna just back up here real quick, RJ. Yeah. So this boat also has a full enclosure. We just have the top up right now, but it has a drop curtain and side curtains. Um, that little that little storage box that RJ was talking about up front, you know, that's a great thing for you know terminal tackles, swivels, oh, weights, year, yeah, yeah, yeah. swivels, yeah. weights, all that small stuff that you would yeah. normally and that that you always want in the boat. You know, not lures necessarily, but a lot of the small stuff. It's a perfect spot for that. If oh you walk God. up to the bow here, Jeff, um, one of the things that's nice on this particular boat as well, um, so we had this set up with the front mounted uh, fish box and then plumbed it with a live well aerator as well. Um, decent sized live well. Um, for a boat of this style and uh, size, a lot of times you sacrifice a decent live well. And here in the Great Lakes, having a live well, especially if you're walleye fishing, is really important. Out on the West Coast, where they're almost all salmon fishing, that's not as important. But one of the nice things about this model and this brand. I'm going to step down out of this boat now, and we'll swing around and take a look at the Coastal. Very graceful. Oh, yeah, thanks. You got that on video. Um, so again, uh, if Jeff, if you just kind of want to step back and take a look at this boat. Um, so the Coastal, this is a 20 foot boat and that 20 feet is measured to here. So the tip of the bow to here is almost exactly 20 feet. Then we have this extended platform that comes off where the engine actually gets mounted to. Again, this is a very traditional way for heavy gauge welded aluminum boats to be designed. That engine being back here frees up a lot more space in the boat. It, it provides you a full height transom like this where you can have a, a, a live well or a fish box mounted right in there. But it also provides a longer running surface. So one of the things that RH does on the Coastal as standard is they have this extended running surface. So when this boat is running through the water, it's going to ride and handle more like a 22 foot boat than it is a 20 foot boat. The other thing that RH does that a lot of the other manufacturers don't do is they've got a true reverse chine. Um, so you can see that this is formed right into the bottom of the boat. Um, and then the, the side is actually welded right directly to the bottom. You don't have an additional part or piece in between the two. And that um, is so key for a dry ride. Exactly, yeah, that, that reverse chine does, does two main things. You hang on to that while you're talking. 
uh, that Reverse Chime does two main things. It provides a drier ride, um, and then it also uh, gives you a little bit more stability, especially when you're at trolling speeds or down off plane. Um, really a nice, nice feature. And so that Reverse Chime actually does run all the way up the boat. Actually, I'm just gonna show here. You can see that reverse chine on the bottom of the boat, all the way the full length of the boat. This boat also has lifting strakes on it, um, as and those those operate both as as strakes as well as they give you some more stability in turns and so forth. Again, a great feature. I'm going to hop up in the boat. I'm going to hand the camera back to Jeff. I'm going to get up in the boat, um, and then he can kind of just look at a few of the details as I point them out. So I had mentioned um, this full height transom. So you're you're in the back of this boat and say you're, you know, you're in rough water and you know those waves are coming right up to the transom of the boat. Well, you really don't have to worry about this boat getting swamped. You know, some more traditional boats that are out there with a more traditional transom, you get into rough water and you're you're trolling or you're you're back trolling or anything like that, you always are worried about those waves, you know, coming up over the boat and swamping it. You don't really have to worry about this because this again is a full height transom you know it's it's a nice deep boat the, the one thing, thing oh i'm gonna interrupt you real quick the one yeah. thing that so um josh and i were talking about this the other day so one of the things we really like on this boat is so if you look at the edge of where this the offshore platform comes out there's a space you know, between there and that corner. So if you're netting a fish. Yeah, so if you're netting a fish, you can just go right down, you know, mm -hmm. right at the back corner of the boat. You actually can be closer to the back of this boat yeah. to net a fish than you can in a lot of other more traditionally designed boats. Yep, and you can and see. And that's the same on both sides. So again, if, if you're coming in to net a fish, you can be right there, right where the fish is, right where you want it. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, and, and we have this conversation about offshore platforms quite often. Oh, how are you going to net a fish? It's not an issue. It's, 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 if not better, it's no worse than any other boat that's All out there right. on for the sure. market. For sure, for sure. So again, this nice full transom gives you this kind of another, another nice feature as you get this nice platform here where you can use it for multiple things. What they've done is on the top of the um, uh, live well, they've actually added a cutting board material. So if you do want to fillet a fish or if you want to you know, just cut bait or whatever you're doing, you can do that right there. But then when you open this up, of course, you've got a nice big deep live well. You know, so this is deep and long. It's not real wide, but again, this transom isn't a real wide transom either. Um, but again, plenty big enough, you know, for the kind of fish that you'd be putting in there, perch, walleye, and so forth. Did you say fillet a fish? I did say fillet a fish. <laughs> oh, okay. If you have a fillet of fish, that would work in there too. Uh, one feature that this boat has that's that's part of a package that we put on this boat. It's called the X package. Um, that gives you a lot of nice things. It does give you this as well, what they call a hand wash station. Um, so you can actually take the wash down pump and fill this with water. And if you just want to have a spot where you just have some cleaner, fresher water, you can just reach in there, wash your hands off, um, wash it's, off your gear. Otherwise. It's also really good if you're, say you're in the Great Lakes and you're perch fishing or walleye fishing, if jig fishing, minnows. It's a great, oh, great place for great. Minnows. You fill yeah. that thing full of water. Boom. You're on your yeah. own. You're, yep. you're on you the way. You could almost even fit one of those little minnow buckets right you in could. there. You could. Yep. So again, uh, look at the back room, back end of this boat, how much space there is. So again, this is a 20 foot boat. You've got all kinds of space. You can easily fish four or five, maybe even six people in this boat. Oh, for and sure. you're not going to be on top of each other. For sure. um, that's the nice thing about the extended platform is in a boat of this style, size, you end up with a lot of space inside the boat. Um, other features in this boat are very similar to the RH, or I'm sorry, the SH Sport that we already looked at. Two bench seats, a driver and passenger seat. These are the upgraded driver and passenger seats with the armrests on them. Um, this also has these nice steps um, where you can step up to get on and off the boat, like at a dock. Um, these bench seats um, provide storage inside them as well. Um, so nice big, big storage. It's not what I would consider dry storage, but it's definitely a good spot to uh, you know, put life jackets and that kind of stuff. I wanted to get up like this and just kind of give you an idea of how big this boat is. So if you look, there's the live well. I'm looking down at the live well. There's a lot of space 
as RJ walking through to the back of the boat. So I'm a little under six feet tall, and you've got almost six feet of length of clear floor space in just the back the of this boat. Edge. Yep. I mean, uh, that huge. Did you go over to the, that the, actually the storage underneath? Yeah, the, so there's actually, this boat again has a, a package on it called the X package. What that does also is it gives you, um, I just gotta unlatch it there. It gives you storage underneath both the driver and passenger seats as well. So again, just another spot for putting storage, stuff that you need out of on the boat, um, life jackets and so forth. Um, at the front of this boat, it's very, very similar configuration. Um, you've got just a storage box here, again, for things that you want to be able to access quickly. You have the, the tackle storage here as well. Uh, again, just a really nice feature, not something you see on a lot of the other brands of heavy gauge boats. Um, again, full welded, nice, sturdy windshield. I mean, this thing is not going anywhere. Nice opening window here. And then on this boat, the bow is just real basic, but actually pretty roomy. You've got quite a bit of space up there. So if you wanted to mount a pedestal seat, you could easily do that. Um, it would be it would be plenty of space to have a seat up there for, oh, yeah, for casting sure. or jigging or whatever you would want to do from the bow. Yep. And you can see there's two, two little scuttle holes down in the corners. Yeah, so that's a self-bailing bow deck. Uh, again, a pretty typical common uh, design element on most heavy gauge boats. Um, and you see it here on the RH as well. Did you say that's a Jeff Bailing bow? No, I did not say oh, said, Jeff Bailing. Oh, you said self bailing. Self bailing. Okay, yeah. just checking. So again, this is the RH uh, aluminum boats. This is what they call the coastal. This is the 20 foot version of it. Um, they do have a few other sizes available as well, uh, but we think the 20 foot version is, is a good price point boat. So again, this boat, 2024 model year with a 200 horse Mercury V6 on it, we can sell this boat for less than $70,000. It's a huge value. Um, this is a very large boat and any other boat that's in this size class is more than likely gonna be more expensive than $70,000. Yeah. Um, we, we're actually less than $70,000. I think we actually have a price tag on this boat right now at $67,250. Um, it's hard to beat. Uh, in this size class. No, oh, I put dirty footprints in there. Um, oh, good job. Cool thing here is dual windshield dual wipers. Windshield wipers. I'm yep. telling you, until you've ever been in a boat with windshield wipers, you'll never be without it again. So this is cool too. The access panels to the back. You know. Yeah. So, so these are um, nice big access panels. So uh, bilge pumps are down here. Live well pump is down here. A uh, nice big open area. You know that that's. You know, easily huge. accessible. Gas tank is right here. Again, easily accessible to get at your fittings and stuff. We don't even have this engine all hooked up yet. We don't even have it uh, hooked up to the gas tanks. Then here we've got storage uh, for, this has a two battery system on it. Also has a wash down pump on it, which is mounted right here, easily accessible. The second battery goes here. And then on the other side, that one's a little, um, we actually have one battery in here and then we've got battery switches and an uh, emergency parallel switch in the over, over in the corner there. Yeah. So again, just a, just a very well thought out, very basic yet well equipped boat um, in the heavy gauge market. Um, RH aluminum bolts provides value. You, you're, you're getting a a boat that compares to other brands and other types of boats that's more like a 22 foot boat with the size and the engine and so forth for an extremely good value. Um, and that's really why we brought this brand in. We believe that they're gonna provide our customers, you know, the, the competitive edge in a boat that's gonna really, really provide them all the features and function that they actually need in a hardcore big water fishing boat. The other thing, too, is the fact that we are going to Detroit in January. I think I got it set up right. Um, we're going to be going to Detroit in January for the Detroit Ultimate Fishing Show. Yep. Uh, and that is from January 10th through the 14th. January 11th through the 14th. 11th through the 14th. Yep. Um, so um, that's in 2024, January 11th yep. 10th, uh, through the 14th, 2024. We'll have this boat there. And we'll have the other one that we showed you, the RH18 SH Sport, will be there as well. 
uh, and some other stuff. So we're going to be there. Um, there'll be RJ and I, Josh. Um, and so we'll be there and we'd love for you to come by if you happen to be in the area, if you want to take a trip. It's, it's a great show. It's huge. If you're a fisherman in the Great Lakes, it's the place to go. So it's something you definitely want to check out. Yeah, and take a look at our website. We've got details on all these boats uh, and more. Um, R &R, R -R .com. Again, I'm RJ. This is Jeff, R&R &R Marine Supply in Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Thank you very much. Have a great day.